death, burial, resurrection. Bada-bing. <laughs> Bless you guys. Thank you. Uh, usually, Bray, uh, if you make a mistake, nobody knows. If you just kind of, if you can get the beat on track. But keep going strong enough and they will follow you. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it's important when people follow you. Even if they're running you out of town, just act like you know what's going on and you're... <laughs> Leading them. <laughs> uh, I got It's all jumbled up here. Let's see. I want to. I want to. I want to remind you of where we were at last week. Can I do that? Uh, the computer. The Bible computer's down, so that's why there is not going to be any scripture up tonight. You guys okay? So you just got to really pay close attention. And I know that some of you are used to reading it with me saying it, but, and there's, there's power in that too. I mean, you know, actually seeing it and hearing it both, it, it's good. But we were talking about uh, 1 Timothy 4.8, for bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having the promise of life that now is and that which is to come. That whole godliness thing is just, Amazing, because as we press ourselves into godliness, the effect, the effect that it has on us and it has on others. I got to do something. Uh, during worship tonight, it just kept rushing over me how good God is. In spite of everything that goes on that happens in our lives, He's mindful and He's right there in the middle of with us going. As we go through things, he doesn't forsake us and leave us alone, run out on us. Uh, and many of us have that feeling because we have been dumped on and left behind and hurt and deserted and, you know, all of that. And so we have that tendency to fall back in that and, and feel like, well, I don't even know if God's for me anymore or with me anymore. I don't even know if he's hearing my prayers. Uh, I'm going to... As I was sitting there, because I've been speaking to everybody here as, you know, we go forward and work for Jesus and trying to grow and mature spiritually. But I'm speaking to myself as much as I am everybody else because when God gives me things, he's ministering to me at the time too. And I tell you, don't fear. Fear not. You know what I'm tell telling myself? Fear not. So I'm not, I'm just not preaching. Sometimes I'm a spectator in the sermon too. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm listening to it as the Holy Spirit. I can't even take credit for a sermon. I can't. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit who does it. If it's good, it's Him. <laughs> if it touches your life and, it's like, and it feels like somebody's reading your mind and reading your heart and reading your life, that's not me at all. That's the Holy Spirit in His gift working through me, speaking to you exactly what you need to hear. Listen, I want to, I want to tell you what, uh, sec I, I wrote this down while I was sitting there because God just spoke this to me because I feel like, Lord, I, I encourage others to have faith even in the worst times. And man, I've been watching some people that are so dear to me go through things that I can't even, and wouldn't even want to know what it feels like or imagine but I want to be sensitive to it and compassionate. I've been through enough in my life to know that when loved ones are sick and fall ill, or if we lose loved ones, that pain, I know that pain, but sometimes people go through stuff that's so incredibly hard, and, and, it, and not all of us deal with it the same. Rhonda, you blow my mind. You're a powerful woman. Uh, and I know you don't feel like that all the time. But you put one foot in front of the other and you walk it out. But sometimes I feel like I've lost all faith. I mean, and it's just a moment. I mean, I, and in a moment, and I'm like, oh, my God. And then it's like, oh, you are right there. How stupid of me. Listen to what 2 Timothy 2.13 says. If we're faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny 
himself. So no matter the failures that we have and even the unbelief that we might have, we've got to be like that man who was praying to Jesus for his son, saying, I know you can do it. I know you can, Jesus. But he goes, but help my unbelief. And Jesus just simply looked at him and he said, it's done. Your child is healed. That, you know, that's incredible. Because a lot of times you think, well, you've got to have faith to receive it for anything. What about when Jesus raises the dead? Whose faith was that? That person didn't have anything. They were dead. And he raised them from the dead. Think about that for a moment. I want you to know that we serve a powerful God that is able to transcend. He breaks his own governing rules on this planet and does that which is impossible because he's God. But he does it with a purpose and for a reason to bring us into a place that we can trust him and believe him. It's all about receiving his word and trusting in God. We need to really trust in him because he does have our best interests in mind. Even when we can't feel him or we feel like we've been deserted and we don't even know he's there. He's there. Okay? So I just I just had to like share that because I want I want to start that and I know I said this last week and I and I remembered I got this far because I I kept saying 1 Timothy and it was 2 Timothy. You all remember that. Yeah, it's things that I do. Um in 2 Timothy 1, 7, I'll remind you, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear. You know, that, that's so important because that's why I say that fear is the opposite of faith. And that's why when love is perfected in you and you have trust in God or you have that pure faith in God, it casts out all fear. There's no fear. But, you see, what he has given us is the power and the love and the soundness of mind. And all of those work together because spiritually, when we have a sound mind, we're going to have compassion for one another. We're going to move in power and love, crossing every boundary and doing whatever it takes to fulfill the destiny that God has placed before us. Because without that purpose... We don't have much. As a matter of fact, we get really confused and we don't know who we are or where we're going because we've lost purpose and we, and we forgot where, what we are here for. That's why it's so important to, for God to restore our identity and that we remember who our spiritual father is. Knowing the house of God that we belong to, that we are citizens of a kingdom that has no end. And just thinking about all that is lays ahead too. I mean, I mean, we got to live in the moment as people of God, because now faith is. We've got to understand that eternity. We stand in the middle of it, and you know our destiny. Many times we look like, well, someday, someday, someday it's not going to be so hard. Someday it's going to be better. Someday we're going to be through this. But listen. Right now in the middle of the journey, we're standing in our destiny. And if we can receive that, we can understand that and come to our full potential that God is trying to work out in us, things would be much better for us. Because we recognize who we are, what we're doing, and every step is done with purpose. I know I'm going all sideways, but I can't help it because God's put this down in me. We, and the whole reason why I started this series is to minister to us because of all the hurtful things that we've been experiencing, all the tough times that we've been going through, all the things that's been happening to us from the right and to, from the left, but yet God remains faithful. And we need to know that and hear that. And we as a ministry need to come together, to work together. Listen, you need me, I'm here. No matter what. Don't be afraid to approach. All right? I can't do everything, but I'll do what I can, and i got your back. In other words, I'm not going to let you go through it alone. And that's what God wants us to do. So we have to, uh, uh, 
we have Paul talking to Timothy right here. And when he speaks this, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And, but I want to back up a little bit, and I want to read what these things that he was speaking to Timothy, because Timothy was a young ma- pastor that Paul was raising up, but he came from a, 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 whole, a whole family of pastors, that, and the women were the ministers in that family. The Apostle Paul, he says this to Timothy. He goes, when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, I am persuaded that it's also in you. He says, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. That's powerful stuff what Paul is saying to this young minister. And yet, is, is gifts imparted? Absolutely. By the laying on of hands and faith. When we do it with purpose. I laid hands on you the other night, Ed, with purpose. Because God instructed me to. And there's impartation. The anointing is a real and a tangible thing because the anointing is Him. He's the anointing oil. He's the one that was poured out for us. He's the one that breaks every yoke and destroys, absolutely destroys the burden off of our neck. Takes that yoke of slavery and bondage and destroys it so that we're never in bondage again. Tonight, did you guys hear the songs that they were singing? About freedom. There's freedom in this place. There's favor and there's grace and there's mercy. Everywhere. The love of God, in other words, surrounds us. And we need to remind ourselves the things that we've received in this life, the impartations that God has given us. Look, we're not going to be held accountable for things that wasn't given to us and things we don't know. But the more we know and the more we receive from God, the more is going to be required of, of us. And so we've, not only is those around us should make a demand on us, we should make a demand on ourselves, knowing what God has given us, knowing what we have at our hands. The potential that lies within us because we got the help of Almighty God Himself. Holy Spirit lives within you. You are much more, you are much greater than you've ever imagined. There are things in you that you can do because of the impartation of the Spirit of God that He has placed in you. I don't care who you are. I don't care what lifestyle you came from. I don't give a hoot about your past. Because what matters is now, today, and your future, and because you're covered with the blood of Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit is resident within you, you are the temple of the living God. That's why you need to build yourself up spiritually and exercise. And if you want to lift a few weights, do that too. How many more pounds, Chance? Oh. Isn't that exciting? Because God wants us healthy. He does. He just does. He wants us to live. Listen. I've even had a mindset lately, and I apologize for this because I don't know how much it's, it's went out, but, I, but just trying to survive in my family life, in this ministry, to keep the doors open, keep gas in the truck, and keep the food uh, bills paid and everything else for our programs. Make sure Gray's house floats and is comfortable and everybody's going good. Patrick undergirds that. Rhonda undergirds that because none of this could happen without us as a team doing all the things that we do and keeping the fo- food flowing in and flowing out and just everything that our hands touch, we, we don't get to keep it. Alex, <laughs> Alex yes. Your dedication and, and your faithfulness and your loyalty and your drive, no matter what. Pastor, don't worry. The worship team is going to make it. We're going to do it. Because if I didn't have people physically in the, in the flesh, you see, we, it's great to know that God's there, but we need each other. We need someone to come up and put an arm around us and say, you know what, I just love you for who you are. I, I'm here. That's important. That's the whole thing about this 
growing up and exercising our spiritual godliness. Because as we grow, you'll find, and I got some scripture here that actually leads us. Well, how do you, Pastor, how do you exercise spiritually in godliness? Well, I want to share that with you if I can just shut up long enough. I gotta speak it from the heart. I gotta say the things that you guys are tugging on and what the Holy Spirit's gonna answer. You see, I just can't set up something and say, okay, this is what I'm gonna do, because sometimes that shifts dramatically when you're out there and you're hungry and you make a demand on the Spirit. The Spirit's gonna answer you, whether I want to or not. Some things are hard to say, let alone look at. But as, as, you know what, it's like, the, it's like the policeman and the fireman and the soldier and all of those, the, 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 met, the MTAs, and all, how they run to danger. And you don't even want to look at it, especially when it involves children and stuff. The, and the people, the people that go in to rescue those in harm's way. But as a spiritual leader, we're faced with those same things, hearing the things that happen to people and how they're victimized in their own homes sometimes where they should have sanctuary and safety. And to those of you that hear my voice right now that have been victimized in a place where you should have been safe, I'm so sorry that happened. And God knows that it happened. And He's got healing for you, but you've got to release it all. Even though they might, the victimizer might not deserve it, you've got to forgive them. And remember, the forgiveness is not for them, it's for you, so that you can be free from that incident. See, I know He loves me. Just go ahead and say it out loud. I know He loves me. He does. Um, okay. Where was I? Stirring up. So he goes on. He's talking to Timothy. Paul goes on to say, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. See, God had a plan and you were in it. He had a purpose and a plan for you in His master plan. When Paul was lifted up and began to see these things, he said, I saw things I couldn't honor. Things that were too great to even express with human words. But if you pay close attention to his teachings and his writings and the gospel that he preached, he begins to unveil the mysteries of the church and the body of Christ and how the gifts work together and the fruit of the Spirit is developed in us as we approach godliness and as we move in that way and what that does and how it trans forms us from the inside out, not from the outside in. I'm going to hit that in a second. Yes, I can get there. <clears throat> but has now been revealed, this is continuing as he speaks uh, to Timothy, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death, Somebody say abolished death. And brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. That is the good news, the message of Jesus Christ. His power and His anointing that God anointed Him with. To raise up a people on planet earth that would be anointed ones that would walk in, a, in the light and take the gospel of Jesus Christ forth, anointed with an anointing from heaven so that heaven could be produced on earth and an outpost of heaven would be on earth once again. That's why it's so important to understand when they said, Jesus, how do we pray? He said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth even as it is in heaven. Here we go. Romans 12.2. Here he is talking to a bunch of Romans. Can you believe it? <laughs> and he says this, and do not be conformed to this world. In other words, we are living in a physical world. 
And we have physical bodies that are susceptible to the things around us and the curses that are in planet Earth. And the good things and the pleasures and all of that. But don't get caught up with that. Don't be caught up with physical things. And it's not, I'm not saying that God doesn't want us blessed with material riches. He does want us blessed, but He don't want us to be caught up with it and our, our lust for things go beyond what they should be. There should be a good desire to have good things, but it shouldn't consume us. And all we want is we want stuff because it it goes, it goes very bitter and very wrong very fast. But we need to look upon Him and look for heavenly things and set our thoughts that are on things above. Does that make sense? And there is a lot of pressure, especially on the younger generation. Now, I'm not hoodwinked and bamboozled by it, but there's a lot of stupidity coming out of politics, government, and just the trends that are now coming out of the colleges and everything, and it's a bunch of... Hooey. Aren't you proud of me? I didn't cuss. But it is. It's a bunch of hogwash. And there is so much pressure. And here's the thing, because all they hear is this silliness and this stuff. It's so easy for them to be conformed into the, the newest trends. We need to be careful of that. We need to be very careful because we're just being conformed to the ways of the world. But Paul says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. New, did I say we were going to get to conduct here a little bit? Because I want you to remember this. Our conduct as believers in Christ, as spiritual beings, and remember, i got to say this too because of what I said earlier, we are spiritual beings. We're not physical beings. We're phys phys spiritual beings living in a physical body. Remember that. We're not just out trying to have some encounter that's going to make us spiritual. We were made spiritual, and in the curse that was lost, and then it was restored again by the second man, Adam, which is the new creation. And that's why the old creation passes away, and the new creation comes in with the Lord Jesus Christ, where we believe Him and receive Him into our heart. But remember, all of the conforming of religion and everything else is law-driven. But when it comes from Jesus Christ, it is life given. It's the life in you that produces the fruit of the Spirit, that produces those gifts that is within you, God given, and it's part of your ministry because it develops into who you are and what you become and what those around you feel and hear and see through we are actually transmitting spiritual life through this physical world. It's amazing. It's like when God said light be and light went through the physical realm and creation started and things started forming because of the power of light and what His Word said about it. Mm, my goodness. So, new mind brings a new change in our conduct. So I'm going to go on with Romans and... I'm not, I can't exhaust all this that's here. We don't have enough years left. No, if we really got down and looked at each each verse, word by word, we just we can only do so much. I mean, given a, a, a day or two out of the week that we spend together. But he goes on to say this in verse 10, Be kindly affectionate. Just don't, you know, don't be good to each other. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. That sounds pretty heavy. That sounds pretty deep. I mean, in other words, I can't be concerned with my needs until I'm concerned with what your needs are. Because I gotta, I'm get, if, if I'm truly walking in the Spirit of God, I've got to give preference to you. 
I'm not going to, if you're making a mistake or a failure, it's not my job to knock you down and condemn you and tell you how bad you are. That, believe me, we've got a devil that's on the job all the time, and he'll do that. You don't need your preacher doing it. You don't need your preacher beating you up about sin or anything else, but telling you the truth about the gospel and the way out of sin is the life that I'm talking about right now through Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit working mightily in you. Are you guys hearing this? He said, not lagging in diligence, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope. Woo! Woo! Woohoo! Do we got anybody that knows how to rejoice? <laughs> Almost want to dance. <clears throat> Patient in tribulation. Continuing steadfastly in prayer. I like this one. I got this one. Distributing to the needs of the saints. Patrick, this is you. Given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Mm, that's tough. I don't even want to hear that. My flesh says, kick them. And kick them twice. I don't mean just kick them. I mean kick them with a karate chop. Actually, that'd be a kung fu because karate is more defensive and kung fu is more go get them. Or tai chi. Okay. We'll go tai chi. Hi -ka! Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll start that one over again because this is, this is the spirit of Christ. You know, they're hanging him on the cross and he's saying, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Praying for the ones who's killing them. Bless those who persecute you and bless and do not curse. And when, 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 it, when it says curse, it don't mean say a bad word. It means place a curse against them. Like when you say, when you say damn something, that's, that's a curse. Not a cuss, a curse. You guys get it? Cuss words are, you know, nasty gutter language and all that stuff. There's a big difference between cussing and cursing. So you guys know, I'm not trying to convict of those of you who have potty mouths. Not my job. I'm just pointing out the difference. I've done it from the pulpit. I mean, but I, I, if I'm going to cuss, not curse, if I'm going to cuss, I do it as appropriate. And if I cussed all the time, it wouldn't have no meaning at all. But if I cuss like five times a year, somebody's going to listen. Right, honey? Oh, no. I love you, baby. <laughs> you notice how the ones you love the most can make you cuss? <laughs> okay, let's get back to the anointing. All right, we only got like a couple minutes left. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Repay no one evil for evil. In other words, you don't fight fire with fire in this circumstance. What do you think he's going to say next? Hmm. Repay no one evil for evil, but have regard for good things in the sight of all men, and if possible. I'm so glad Paul put that in there, because sometimes you just got to, like, knock two or three people out in your lifetime. Other than that, if possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceable with all men. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I told you it was talk. We were as we exercise in godliness and spiritual things, it was going to come directly at our spiritual walk with Him and how we conduct ourselves. That's why I love Ephesians. I know you've been wanting me to get back to Ephesians. I think I got a verse in here from Ephesians, because you see Ephesians three, four, and five. Is all about our walk. It's all about our conduct. Because as we've come to the knowledge of who we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that's our position, that's our purpose, that's our identity, then our conduct begins to change. This follows through throughout the Bible from cover to cover. Because when you're impacted by the Spirit of God, it will change the way you think, 
the way you talk, the way you act, the things you do. It's the spiritual life within you. It's not trying to do what Jesus did. It's let Jesus living in you. We ought to make a new bumper sticker. Anyway. Okay, I'll give you one from Ephesians. You ready? Ephesians 5.2. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given us given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma now I've said a lot about Paul should I say something from Peter huh you guys want to hear from Peter okay I don't want to leave Peter out I, I like I love Peter a lot yeah he had a rough start Jesus even said, Satan wants, you know, to sift you, man. He wants you. But don't worry, I prayed for you. Here's Peter. Uh, 1 Peter 3.8 says, Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. another. Love as brothers. Be tender-hearted and courteous. Listen, I'm not always tender-hearted. And I always try to be courteous. But I try to look at all people as brothers and sisters and I would tolerate quite a bit from my brothers and sisters I'm not saying I have to tolerate a lot from you but I will but we it is a given that we should and we've got to have compassion we've got to have that love we got to be tender-hearted toward one another not hard-hearted and ready to blow up and blow off and blow out and forget you and you've really ruined it with me and you know it's done we're over I mean you guys know all those words that but that's not the way to be but you got to go the extra mile you got to be forgiving you got to be understanding even when they just don't get it and they've broken your heart I'm not gonna let them see that I'm just gonna continue to love we have to I know this is hard stuff Jesus had some really hard words but if we want to walk in victory and we want his light to shine through us and be victorious and be blessed in every way, we've got to do this. And we don't have to do it in the natural. We've got to do it in the spiritual and it will be displayed naturally as he shines through us. Not re and so, and I, I, I continue with Peter here and then I'll be done. Uh, not returning evil for evil or rivaling for rivaling, but on the contrary. This is the only good contrary I can find. <laughs> Blessings and knowing that you're called to this, that, that you uh, may inherit the blessing. All right? Was it okay? I got a lot more. It is very important that we don't go around comparing our spirituality to others. Actually, truly, the more spiritually be, we become, the more humble we are, the more courteous we are, the more gentle we become. You know what David said, who was a great warrior that had the blood of many on his hands? He was a giant killer. He raised up giant killers. And he said of God, because God handled David in a certain way. And he said, oh, God! Your gentleness has made me great. See, gentleness is not weakness. It's great power under control. And as we move toward others in gentleness, remember gentleness is a strength, not a weakness. And just love where there's no love that should be given. Forgive when forgiveness is not even deserved. Uh, give compassion when you feel like, nah, they're not deserving of it. And remember Jesus and his words, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing. And we're in Christmas season, so joy to the world. The Lord has come. Not is come. He has come. So you guys have an amazing week. Keep your eyes up. Continue to pray for this entire family, for this ministry, for the families going through things here, that they have breakthroughs at every level, that God just shows up and shows off that some of you need to have some, some dreams and visions in the nighttime 
that were so your mind is out of the way and he can just download in your spirit, man, some things that you need to hear and see. So I pray a magical Christmas in the spirit that beats the snot out of Disneyland and God will just show you some amazing things in his wonderland. Things that he's called you to do. The purpose that he's raised you up and, and actually... Many of you already have it within you because as a child you had dreams and you had things that you wanted to accomplish, someone that you wanted to become. You know what? Those are usually God-inspired, God-given dreams and visions, and I pray that God stirs that up in you and bring those back to your remembrance so that they're restored to your true identity and you can do it in Him because with Him all things are possible. The communion table is set. Audrey, bless you and thank you for all that you do as we receive tonight. And if you, if you need healing in your body or if you need healing in relationships or whatever it is, remember his body was broken to make you whole and his blood was shed to cover all sin. God bless you all.